Hey there everyone, Trantia here, and welcome back to Persona 4 Golden. So, in between episodes, it took me about 37 minutes to finally get all the rest of the power rocks I needed. What a pain. But here we are on the ninth floor of the Secret Laboratory, and it's time to save Naoto. Let's go. Naoto! Ah, it's about time you arrived. Hmm, that's different. Dealing with this child has been quite a pain. It's useless speaking with you. I need to go back now. Why? Why are you leaving me here? Why am I always left alone? It's so lonely. I don't want to be alone. Naoto-kun. You wear the same face as me. It's as if you're implying we're one and the same. But the difference between me and you is... Why delude yourself? I am you! These childish gestures are no mere affectation. They're the truth! The fools all say it, don't they? You're only a child. Keep out of our business, kid, and so forth! No matter how many cases you spend hours cogitating over, no matter how many crimes you solve, you're a child in their eyes! It's your brain they're interested in, the gray matter locked up in that skull. As long as they need it, you're an ace, detective. But once you're done, it's back to the playpen with you. You haven't the means to deal with society's two-faced nature. You're just a lonely child. Naoto. I want to be a grown-up. I want to be a big boy right now. Then they'll see who I am. I... I want a reason for me to stay. That's enough. I can find my own reason for living. I'm telling you that's impossible. You are but a child. How can you change that essential truth? Stop it! At your core, you admire the sort of strong and cool men who populate detective fiction. But in trying to emulate them, you must know that in truth, you're nothing of the sort. You're a child. There's no avoiding first principles. Admit that you're a child, and admit that there's nothing you can do about it! Now then, our analysis is complete. Let us begin the body alteration procedure! You have no objections, do you, Naoto Shiragane? Stop it! Naoto. Such a cool, manly name. But a name doesn't change the truth. It doesn't let you cross the barrier between the sexes. How could you become an ideal man when you were never male to begin with? Wait, what? Did he... Did I hear that right? He's not a guy? I won't throw a tantrum. That accomplishes nothing. <laughs> How often I've heard those words from the adults. Throwing a tantrum won't solve anything, Naoto Kun and other such bilge. They made you cry, didn't they? Yet here you are, mimicking those same men. What exactly are you trying to justify? What? It's all right. You needn't suffer anymore. That's why you're undergoing this body alteration procedure to begin with. You throw a tantrum, but it fails to change the situation a single bit. I can quite understand the feeling. After all, I am you. That's not true! Don't say it! 
It's okay. Let the kids spill the whole thing. If not, Nato's just gonna keep hurting. We'll just do our job and kick the Shadow's ass, yeah? <laughs> As if you know anything about me! You'll kick my ass, huh? Fine! Go ahead and try, you lizard-brained imbecile! Save the discussion for later! Here it comes! I am a shadow, the true self! What? Are you sick of yourselves too? Very well, then let's begin this special operation! Alright, so Shadow Naruto. Now real quick, I just want to say I absolutely love the uh, scene we just saw. The way that Naruto's voice just kind of starts breaking more and more as we get to the, the climax of it all, I guess you could say. All right, so I would just love to use Brave Blade, but here's the thing about Shadow Naruto. Our strengths mean nothing. <laughs> uh, we'll just power charge with Chie. Yeah, so I, I in the original Persona 4, uh, your second tier Personas would have no weakness, at least Yosuke's and Chie's. That is not the case in Golden. Also, I'm just going to throw Magic Mirror on Yukiko, because if there is one person I do not want silenced, it is Yukiko. Please go to Yukiko. Yes! So, here's a little fun thing that we just did. So I, I threw that on there, and see how we just reflected that silence. We, we just made this fight quite a bit easier for a minute. Now, I think I'm just going to mind charge and then next. Well, I don't want to switch to Thor because I could get hit really hard. But if I can just get like a severe thunder, I mean, we're going to deal with silence now for a bit here. So this is this is pretty good. So we'll just go ahead and Brave Blade with Yosuke. Let's see how much damage this will do. 352. That's pretty good. And now let's see what Chia gets with God Hand. I, I, was th I think I was in the middle of saying something, but I don't care. <laughs> Damn! Okay, so Yukiko, she, I mean, her fire skills won't do much, but eh, we'll just, we'll see what happens. Let's see how much not a lot is. I mean, yeah, 163. No, no, that will never do. Patience must lie still for me to drill proper holes into them. Oh, what does this do? Power is sealed, huh? I really don't know what that means. I'm a little scared. Uh, anyways, we're switching over to Thor for a sec. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're just gonna do, do a little bit of a thunder rain. And then, like, I don't want to waste Yukiko's SP because he, here's the problem with having Yukiko at this high of a level right now. I'll just power charge with Chie. It's the fact that her only heal spells now, I mean like 18 SP to fulfill one is fine, but like it's 40 to, uh, but where, where is it anyways? Sal salvation? Yeah, 40 SP to fully heal teammates and, uh, cure ailments. I'm almost tempted to just see if I have an item that ref like re refills multiple teammates. I don't want to use value medicine. But that may be the only one I have. So, you know, actually, I, do I have a thing for defense? Do I have a thing for defense? This is it's not going to be right here because that's just all that stuff. You know, here I, I wasn't doing real good with time. And now here I am just... Uh, Wasting time. I gotta make up for the fact that, like, this is going okay. I mean, I'm a little worried about Yosuke, but it's fine. Ugh, why must you struggle so much? Okay. Bufu dying. So that's not great for Yukiko. Are you okay? 
Oh yeah, so elemental resistance is nullified. So... I don't know. Just because I can. Trumpeter. And we're gonna just go ahead and... We'll just get debilitate. We'll just extend it right now. Can you stand? Oh, thank you, Yosuke. Based. So, I guess you will re-up... Well, actually, we have one more turn for that. I'll do a little more damage, and then I'll just heal with, uh, Yukiko. Oh, damn. Attack reverted. Oh, shit, it was this turn, huh? Oh, well, let's just see what happens. I mean, that was a chunky number last time, and I'm expecting another chunky number. Yeah, still over a thousand. So, salvation, please. Oh, you just you love to see all that health going up. Okay, Galgamize. Yes, thank God that she missed. Uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Do we just want to do uh, Mega Delone? I, I could I could just do Myriad Arrows, I suppose. We'll just do that. Ooh, you say what? What are you doing? What are you doing? I will tell you magical words if you do it. I love you. I have said it, I love Risei. Because I probably don't even need to power charge, I could probably just end the fight right here. There we go. Yeah, I may be over leveled. What of it? So now Taokun was a girl. <sighs> Are you awake? Where am I? I remember you all arriving and... That's right. You saw everything. <laughs> I lost both my parents in an accident. I was still young, so my grandfather took me in. I was inept at making friends, so I spent my time reading detective novels in my grandfather's study. When I grow up, I'm gonna be an awesome hard-boiled detective. My parents were proud of their job. I had no qualms about following in their footsteps. An inherited occupation can feel stifling to many, but I welcomed it. I yearned for the day I could be a detective myself. Perhaps I inherited that desire from them as well. I was always alone. Seeing that, my grandfather must have believed it was his duty to help me realize my dream. I secretly aided my grandfather with his clients, and before I knew it, people started calling me Junior Detective. At first I was delighted, but not everything went so smoothly. What was that you said about you're only a child? Not everyone welcomes my collaboration when it comes to solving cases. My status as a child was sufficient to offend many of those whom I worked with. Were that the only issue, then it would have resolved itself with time. But though I will one day change from a child to an adult, I will never change from a woman to a man. Do you not like being a girl? Is that why you always dress like a boy? My sex doesn't fit my ideal image of a detective. Besides, the police department is a male-oriented society. If they had the slightest concrete reason to look down on me, no one would need me anymore. You don't know that. Hey, you must know already that what you yearn for isn't to become an adult or become a boy. <sighs> You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. I kept ignoring you, pretending you didn't exist. But you are me, and I am you. You've always been inside me. 
What I should yearn for, no, what I must strive for, isn't to become a man. It's to accept myself for who I really am. The strength of fire required to face oneself has been made manifest. Now Toe has faced her other self. She has obtained the facade used to overcome life's hardships, the persona Sukuna Hikona. In any event, you're a devious bunch. I can't believe you kept something like this hidden for so long. We do a lot better than another group of persona protagonists. <laughs> no wonder the perpetrator has eluded the police. But it's apparent now. This case is far from over. That's right. And you proved it, Naoto. Anyways, we can talk more later. We need to get you out of here. Hey! Hey! Sheesh. She really put her life on the line for this. But without her efforts, we'd never have realized that the culprit is still at large. You're too freaking reckless, damn it. I never doubted that you'd all come for me. Although the reality turned out to be far beyond what I'd imagined. <laughs> what a dumbass. You're no genius at all. <laughs> we were tearing our hair out over you. So you did worry about her, Kanji. Oh. Shut up. M mind your own damn business. I'll take her home. I don't think she can go back by herself. It's all right. I can. No way, Missy. Don't think that doing everything on your own is the adult thing to do. Come on, let's go. Grab on. We were able to rescue Naoto safely, and it seems the case is not over yet. Hey! Welcome back! Oh, thanks, Adachi. Uh, sorry, we got off early today. Come on, take a seat. They found Naoto kun. Oh, uh, do you know who Naoto-kun is? He just up and vanished without a word. But it looks like he's back now. Oh, that's good. Way to put a scare into everyone. Heesh. I'm relieved. Hmm. Hmm? You don't seem surprised. Uh... You didn't already know he was found, did you? What do you mean? Ah, uh, you really ought to do something about that habit of yours, Dojima-san. They go to the same school. Rumors spread fast out here, you know? But man, why'd Naoto-kun disappear? I guess he can be a little difficult. Maybe he got sulky after being given the boot and ran away from home. But I tell ya, I was shocked to hear that he up and vanished like that. If there'd been a fourth kidnapping and murder, We'd be back to square one again. Adachi. You know what sucks? We still don't have proof that the Kubo kid murdered anyone besides Mr. Moraoka. How are we gonna make a case like this? Sure you wanna say this stuff in front of Nanako? I wonder if Dojima-san's instinct is right. Maybe there really is another perp out there. The real one. Adachi, how many times I gotta say it? Quit running your mouth like that! Look, Adachi, I appreciate it because you took all of the, the ire of Dojima away from me and now it's on to you. Thanks, man. Well, sorry. All right, see here. Don't worry about the case. Just go study like a normal student. I ace every test. If you don't... <sighs> I'm going to bed. 
Beer in hand, huh? Sorry, I killed the mood there. But yeah, I can totally understand why Dojima-san's worried. Just leave the case to us police. You know the problems it could cause if something happened, right? Like, if it happened you were mixed up in it. We'd be real worried. Are more scary things gonna happen? No way, Nanako-chan. Everything's alright now. We caught the bad man, so no more scary things will happen, right? Everything's just fine. Okay. Anyways, your dad's just a worry ward. Leave it to me. You might not know to look at me, but I got the most brains in the whole police department. Oh, was that too hard to understand? Did you get it? Well, now that Dojima-san's gone, I should get going too. Good night. Night, Adachi. Well, he went back home after killing the mood, but after saving us from getting yelled at a little bit. What does got brains mean? <laughs> it means he's not an athlete. It means he's smart. So things will be all right? Absolutely. Night passes with the awkward mood hanging in the air. And now the weather. The week ended on a wet note as rain clouds moved into the area. As a result, a thick fog is expected to form in the Inaba region later tonight. Well, the fog will send tonight, but we rescued Naoto, so everything should be hunky-dory. Oh, thanks. What was it? The red goldfish combo. I remember that. I remember that. All right, let's go check out the Midnight Channel. Well, the time is right. The weather's right. Let's check it out. And nothing's there. In the shopping district. Yep, again. Hmm. Who is this guy who just keeps appearing here? Whatever. It, it's Thursday time now. Are you feeling better now? Yes, thanks to all of you. I'd like to thank you once again for what happened. Don't mention it. But, hey, your uniform. Huh? Ah, yes. After contemplating the matter, I went with what I've been wearing thus far. There's no need for you to... Hey, it's the Detective Prince. That's no Prince. I heard he's a she. Huh? Y you serious? If he's a she, then... Oh, oh crap! Uh, kind of disappointed, but then again, there's something neat about it. Yeah, if you look at it a certain way, doesn't she seem pretty cool? My, my, rumors spread so quickly. Yes, they do. <laughs> Just ignore them. Yes, I'm myself, right? That is true. Very true. That aside, I'd like to discuss the case with you all. I know just the place. We're dealing with a kidnap and murder case perpetrated by someone lurking in this very town. And it isn't over yet. Let's go over the finer points after school.
And with that, we're just going straight to after school. To the special headquarters. First, I heard the doorbell ring. But when I opened the front door, I saw no one there. Hmm, that's strange. Just as alarm bells sounded in my mind, someone grabbed me roughly from behind and covered my mouth with something. Immediately afterward, I was put into something like a sack and most likely carried on the culprit's shoulder. Wow, how could you remember all that? The culprit seems to have used a chemical to incapacitate me, but luckily I wasn't completely unconscious. I had been expecting a trick along those lines, so I was somewhat prepared. And of course, I was desperate to gather as much information as I could. No wonder you're an ace detective! That ain't something to be proud of. You are too damn calm about all this. Judging by their actions and body type, I'd say the culprit is definitely a man. I heard no conversations or voices, so I believe he is acting alone. It's after that that things get murky. I felt a single impact, which I assume is when I was thrown inside the TV. But the time from kidnapping to that point seemed too short. It was a matter of minutes. So you were immediately thrown inside the TV after being kidnapped? Oh! Could there have been a TV on the side of the road? Regrettably, my memory from there on is a blur. I see. But man, the killer came right up to the door and rang the bell? That's just crazy. I finally understand why you all testified that you couldn't recall much of what happened. Such a bizarre experience with mental and physical fatigue on top of it it's only natural to be confused. And going by the surrounding circumstances, my kidnapping and everyone else's were near identical. There is no question that the culprit is the same in each case. So, that Mitsuo boy who said he killed King Moron... Everything makes sense now. I can't say for sure until I gather more concrete evidence. But Mitsuo Kubo's only victim was Mr. Moraoka. It was a copycat killing that mimicked the true culprit's method. No wonder King Moron's death broke the pattern in so many ways. The question remains, though, as to how Kubo learned of that world. That's it! That's what was bothering me! Mitsuo could enter the TV, right? Then why didn't he kill King Moron that way? I believe he didn't understand the other world as well as the true culprit. Even though I can now enter it myself, it wouldn't occur to me to use it for murder. And remember, the previous corpses left no sign that their deaths had anything to do with the other world. After Kubo became wanted, leaving him with nowhere to run, he probably thought for the first time, what if I put my entire body into the TV? The bizarre condition of the corpses that caused such commotion is probably because they died on the other side. It's a simpler explanation than figuring out why the killer would risk disposing of the bodies in such a way. Which means their inexplicable condition of being hung on a foggy day wasn't due to the culprit making a statement. Much of our speculation could be tested if we could ask Kubo in person. However, I've unfortunately been taken off the investigation. And I highly doubt that the police will believe any of this. They wouldn't admit that it wasn't Mitsuo in the first place. Once you've said something on TV, it's not easy to admit you were wrong. I believe the primary cause of my dismissal was because I raised that possibility to them. The police won't readily concede that they made false charges. All the more so if the accused is a juvenile. In fact, the overwhelming sentiment with the police force is to end this case with his arrest. Even if it's possible there's another killer? Those dickheads. I had a feeling that would be the case. Not that I trusted him in the first place. But, uh, Naoto, if you were that calm when it happened to you, couldn't you have, you know... 
What are you getting at? I'm not saying you should have caught him, but isn't it kind of sad for an ace detective to go down that easily? Um... Um... To tell you the truth, I was really scared. I I'm sorry. It can't be helped. None of us could resist the culprit either. Don't forget, Naoto-kun is younger than us, and she's a girl. Oh yeah, that's true. I keep forgetting when I see her talking like this. You know, Naoto? What is it? You got balls. For a girl. <laughs> Regardless, I have no doubt that the culprit will continue with his attacks. We can only watch and wait for him to make the next move. But this is no longer a mere job or someone else's affair. I want to know the truth of why we were targeted. Please allow me to join your effort. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll do my best, leader. Naoto has joined the group. She'll definitely be a strong asset in solving the case. Yeah, she's a fucking detective. And that is rank eight with the investigation team. Now, Naoto is like my second favorite in, in character. And I'll, I'll get into more of that later. Since I'm the king of the geniuses, I knew it would work out this way. Fuck you say? Ta-da! Now Chan's glasses. Thank you. They told me about you, Teddy. I can sympathize with your drive to find yourself. If I may help in any way, let me know. Wow! What a nice girl! The true culprit is still at large. And for now, we'll just have to wait. Oh, welcome back! Hi, Nanako. So yeah, we can work as a tutor today, and we will be doing that, but not in this episode. We're definitely going to stop here because there's more storyline stuff tomorrow. But until next time, I'm Trentia. You guys have a good day.